Please tell and spell your last name. Todd Heller, H E D N E R. I'm uh, Tom Hefner, and I'm a soccer consultant, which is part of the uh, team for uh, On Call Review with the Y Group. And we were tasked to um, take a look at the proposed ammonia storage facility. Uh, the proposed ammonia uh, storage facility is going to be used for plant air emissions. It's 40,000 gallons of aqueous ammonia at a 19% concentration. Um, because it's at less than 19% concentration, it's not subject to EPA risk management plan requirements. They typically include enhanced protective provisions for the operation, use, storage, and transport of ammonia, as well as an impact zone analysis in the event of a release of ammonia. Um, the EPA air regulations do have a general duty clause, and the general duty clause as it pertains to the storage and use of ammonia at the proposed facility is knowing the hazards posed by the chemicals and assessing the impacts of possible releases, designing and maintaining a safe facility to prevent accidental releases and minimize the consequences of accidental releases that do occur. Um, the recommendations that we provided included, since the cutoff for the ammonia under the RMP, the Risk Management Plan regulations, is 20%. It may be advisable for um, the power plant project team to evaluate the potential um, risk under um, RMP, Risk Management Plan, which includes an impact zone analysis. Um, it was also proposed that um, maybe a less hazardous chemical than the 19% aqueous ammonia could be considered. Uh, my, I'm not an air expert, but I understand that to uh, get the NOx emissions where you need it to be, you can't use, um, it might not be possible to use anything else except the 19% aqueous ammonia. And also the uh, Pasco Fire Department should be consulted concerning the equipment and training to respond to the chemical accidents at the proposed um, power plant. Thank you, sir. Um, is 19% an unusual thing, or, or, or what they're trying to do here out of normal industry standards? Chem chemicals are provided at um, different concentrations. 19% um, isn't industry standard. It's used at other facilities that use uh, aqueous ammonia. So this is not an unusual thing for this particular plant? No. Thank you. So. Nineteen percent ammonia. Um, can you tell us what the concentrate level is of uh, the standard bottle of the more ammonia that you purchase in the IJ and Pasco? I can't answer that question. Can you explain in say a perfect scenario the outcome of say the wind was blown in a proper way to somebody a thousand yards away of the illnesses and the effects that that might have on, say, a child, an adult, and an elderly person? EPA, under the risk management plan regulations, has an impact zone analysis model that can be used to determine those characteristics. That wasn't part of the work that we did, but it is possible to figure it out under um, the EPA RMP regs. Okay, thank you. You suggested that the Pasco Fire Department be informed and educated about this. Uh, with all due respect to our department, uh, I'm not quite sure they're prepared to, to handle something as large as something like that. Uh, it, it should the whole thing go, or even should a quarter of it go? Uh, what would be an emergency response procedure? 
if something were to happen. The, the Powell Canteen would have to put together a response plan. They're going to have um, response plans for the storage of fuel oil at the facility. They're also going to have response plans for um, the storage of hazardous chemicals at the facility. So I, I wouldn't be able to speculate on what they proposed. I haven't seen what they proposed at this point. Okay, let's, let's talk hypothetically what would a typical emergency response plan be. This is our town, sir. Um, there would be shutdown procedures for the usage of the chemical. There would be um, spill kits. In this case, you probably have gaseous release. Um, there would be notification protocols that would have to be in place. Um, maybe uh, there would be an emergency response contractor that would be involved in a number of different variations that would be in place for the response and release of the monument. Has there ever been a, a burn installed for something like this? Not to my knowledge. Okay. It's going to be airborne if there's release of ammonia. Right. Okay. One last question. What, what potential other chemicals could be used in place of the ammonia? I'm told that urea could be potentially used, but it's not effective enough in the NOx emissions to get the NOx emissions where they need to be. Approved it, if I may, quickly, just because the pacifier issue was mentioned. So I just wanted to remind the board that it was on May 9th, I had put the staff memorandum out to local government and inter departmental comments, right? The, the Pasco fire marshal was one of them, Tom Fagan. Uh, I gave him the copy of the plans, and I did ask that, um, uh, I, this was followed up with a conversation with Butch Carter, because he's um, fire chief there, and he said he was on 519, he said he would send me a letter. I don't have that letter yet, but what I asked of them was, this was uh, just Mr. Carter, it's understood from discussions with Mr. Nyland that an energy is willing to compensate the Pasco Fire District for special hazmat training. Uh, Pasco, is the Pasco Fire District and other fire districts comfortable with what has been offered to the department and do you require additional commitments from Inventor? And please feel free to provide those comments to Planning Board by May 18th. So I reached out to them and I heard back from them, but just so you know. Thank you. Uh, Tara? What about the Department of uh, Public Works? Uh, how would the Department of Public Works yep. go ahead on that as well? <clears throat> yes, they responded. Police responded. Tesco, the Utility District responded. So we're in pretty good shape with getting the comments. Can I go back to Mr. Evans, please? Uh, the 40,000 gallons that we're talking about, of the 19% is going to be in the tank. Did you say that it's not in the tank area, or is that projected? Wait, what am I saying? I'm sorry. If the tank that's holding the ammonia solution, should it not be in some kind of a dike area? The safety. The safety. I, that's my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we're talking about responses to gaseous releases, and I'm not sure if we should be thinking about what's going to happen when there is a spill, because it's going to be off in the atmosphere, just like a chlorine spill at a water treatment plant. They basically vent it to the atmosphere. I think what we need to be addressing is preventing that kind of release to begin with. And so I guess my question would be, um, are there, and maybe you don't have those kind of, that kind of information from them yet, which is part of the problem, is how uh, do they have preventative measures in place? Because we're talking about transporting this material on our roads up there in these tanker trucks, 
correct? Is that how it's transferred? Right. There's daily inspection protocols at facilities that store these types of chemicals that have to be undertaken. They have checklist protocols. Um, that's pretty standard with any type of complicated facility like this. So what we need to be looking at are what sort of measures are going to be installed at the, at the beginning of the process to safely store, transport, store and utilize this basically gaseous uh, chemical that, because we don't want to get to a point where they're responding to a spill, because the spill is gaseous. How long would that 40,000 last them? I mean, 40,000 gallons, any idea of how long that would last in operations? That's not, that would be a uh, question for the power plant team or possibly the aero measurements. I'm just thinking about the, uh, the, yeah, the 2 million gallons of diesel, how long that would last them to be comparing the two. The diesel, the diesel would be used for, uh, over a period of a few days during the winter time. Right. I'm not sure what the usage rate is of the ammonia. I think they came up we'd, have, we'd have to take a look at those plans once they're generated. I uh, think the projection protocols are and how they're going to operate with. But right now it's just, you know, it's a tank on a diagram yeah. and it's referenced in the application with the uh, siting board. The last meeting we had with the uh, uh, energy, we were told that if they, uh, when they swap those to diesel, we were looking at approximately three, uh, three deliveries per hour. So 9,700 gallons of diesel over the course of road every hour. And I was wondering if that's two million gallons of diesel that's being used up inside of three days' time, how long would this 40,000 gallons of ammonia last in, in a normal operation? What specifically is that the ammonia used for? It, it's used as part of the air pollution controls related to uh, nitrous oxide emissions. I, I'm not I'm not an air pollution expert, but I'm trying. So the, the amount of pollution is going in. So the ammonia is used as a, as a cleansing process. Um, is it injected into the, the smokestack to, to help uh, clean the emissions? Um, yeah, the ammonia reacts in the, in the stack of the blue gas with the oxides of nitrogen and the VOC and the carbon monoxide and serves as in the presence of a catalyst and serves to reduce the emissions of all these pollutants. So that's the only purpose of, of the, the ammonia? That's correct. So it's not for cleaning the turbines or no, it's just disinfecting laundry. Right. State of the art emission control. In here, question. I see it's not used to disinfecting laundry. No, it is state of the art uh, air emissions control for waste uh, processing. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question. Thank you. All right. Uh, our next witness to the town will be we're dealing with uh, traffic issues, and James Jackson is 